One of the most exciting things about owning a car is modifying it. But there is a large, large gap between modifying a car and modifying a car the right way. Here on the Snowdrift channel, I like to straddle that line as much as possible. So today I'm gonna to show you guys a few things that I did to prep the RSX for Import Alliance. Naturally, I enjoy doing modifications that are gonna to be to the best benefit of the RSX. But sometimes there are things you can do that will give your car more of that cosmetic flair and not just performance. So with that being said, Let's dive right into today's video, and I hope you all enjoy. I don't lie away from changing over In the moonlight I can't kill this feeling sober So I start to come alive Naturally, I want the RSX to look as good as possible. That's not what it's always about at Import Alliance. It's really just the fact of you being there. And But that's one thing that I've always liked about going to uh, that specific import car meetup is that even if you don't have an import, you can still go. It's really all about how you interact with people with a like-mindedness to you uh, that enjoy the same types of passions that you enjoy. So with that being said, it's like I said, it's not all about making your car look its best but for me that's part of the fun so we are going to be doing a few things to the rsx in order to prepare it let's dive right in obviously a wash is in order that's a given oh hello there a couple of things we did to kick off this cosmetic transformation is we picked up a set of wheel caps for the rpf ones and i pulled off that old cold air intake and we gave it a fresh coat of black paint but wait I didn't show you guys that. This cold air intake, I bought it for a series that I haven't done in a while. I called it the little things, and it's where I was gonna do basic mods to the car. You know, if you're first starting to get into like, you know, modding your car and stuff, this is kind of the stuff that you would normally do. And I started with this, and I was gonna do like a cheap exhaust, and then I just kind of stopped. So I bought this. I actually messed up. So this is bigger than the one that was on the car originally, which is why I went with it. Um, you have a shorty intake, a small diameter intake pipe too. Yeah. But I should have bought a quarter intake for a Honda Civic Si, which is what my RBC intake manifold came off of. Because the only thing is that this does not line up beautifully with you know, the rest of it. Other than that, it's fine. Uh, this is just a pipe. And honestly, like the difference between this pipe and like a K&N or an AEM or something like that might simply just be size and quality. But to me, this is kind of one of those things where it's just like, it's a metal pipe. What are What could you possibly gain from spending $300 on a metal pipe I, when you could spend 50 bucks and get pretty much the same thing in my opinion. I just think aftermarket companies charge way too much for their for a, a, a piece of metal pipe. But anyway, to, to each their own, I've never liked the way this thing looks, the color of it. Uh, and I never really liked how the filter, which that filter's old, I'm gonna be getting a new one, but it's gonna be fine for now. But I never liked how the filter sat like, literally there's no support bracket or anything. So it just kind of sat on top of the uh, shifter cables. Didn't like that. So I cut this elbow out of it, just shorten it up a little bit. And this is, uh, 
this is what color it was and I just hated that, just raw aluminum. Um, so we're gonna be changing that today. I'm not gonna go with flat black. I think flat black is just a little bit meh. I mean, it probably would go with the rest of the car better. I don't know. Let, well, let's make a split decision right, now, right here, right now. Would you guys rather go with flat black? What is this? Is this primer or flat black? This is black primer. Hmm. What is this? Semi-gloss. Gloss or semi-gloss? What do you guys think? Semi-gloss. All right, heard it. Semi-gloss it is. This is gonna be the quickest paint job I've ever done in my life. Where is... Where is it? I know it's around here somewhere. I, I just saw it not too long ago. There it is. All right. I think that'll do. All right, that's good enough. That already looks 10 million times better than it did. I think this is the same paint we painted the CBR wheels with, if I'm not ter terribly mistaken. All right, let's leave that for a few minutes. I think you guys get the idea anyway. All right, you guys, I got the cold air intake pipe uh, painted. You know what? I think it looks a hell of a lot better than it did before with it just being all you know silver and stuff so i've got it sitting on top of a paint can right now just to kind of let it finish drying in here i got it off of the tree out there and not a perfect paint job by any stretch just gonna let it sit out here and dry and i'll pick you guys back up when we install it got this thing looking much much better um what you guys didn't see is i actually used super clean and sprayed this thing up and uh hose it off outside to clean it and uh yeah I mean, that is not an advertised functionality of Super Clean, but this thing was dingy as hell, and uh, now it's not. So what we gotta do now is I got this little line right here plugged off, but we've gotta get this thing installed. This is just the inlet air temperature sensor. Probably would be easier if I lubed it up first. I don't, I don't feel like doing it. Well, God, I may have to. I mean, just, just the hairy, ah, why? Dang, look at that, look how easy that was. All right, let's get this bad boy reinstalled. Oh God, yes. This was the way to go. Let's see which way to go. Heck yeah, I think that looks a whole lot better, you guys. Just cut, it just really looks, what the heck is that? Oh my God, is that a run? Oh, oh no, guys. Oh my God, no, 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 I gotta run, I gotta run. Oh, wait, I know what to do. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, this is gonna really just fix this thing right up. I mean, why didn't, why didn't I think about this before? This is genius. Oh, you guys. Now, shh, look at that. I just, shh, that's probably like at least 15, 20 horse right there. <laughs> we're going to, uh, we're gonna continue this video. I don't know uh, how, how much further, how many more things we're gonna do to this thing. So one of the next things we're gonna be taking care of is this guy right here. We're gonna be deleting the rear wiper blade and arm. Uh, it's not something that I have always, you know, thought would have been a good idea. But as I've grown a little bit older, I honestly do think that it would clean up the rear of the car a little bit and kind of uh, accentuate another part that we're going to be adding uh, back here at some point. So with that being said, we're going to work on getting this uninstalled and we have our delete kit right here. Got that ordered off the internet. I'll put a link in the description if I remember, but we're going to uh, be getting this 
ready to be installed, but I got a little something special that I'm gonna be doing to this thing before we take it to the final assembly. Oh, I'm just uh, out here working on the car. What are you doing? I'm working. You're still working? Perfect. Um, I was actually going to ask you about work. Yeah. Is that guy that does the laser engraving, is he, do you know if he's going to be there or not? I'll ask him. See. Run it by him and see see what he says. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. All right. Love you. Love you too. Bye. Sweet. I'm gonna eat dinner from now on so I'm, I'm glad this thing finally showed up welcome back to the channel you guys it's so great to have you here it's so great to have you here so me and Emery are gonna show you guys our brand new genuine now this is a hundred percent genuine type R wing straight from Japan overnight parts you know how it goes so you want to help me open this bad boy you wait hot All right, well, let's get this thing open somehow. It's like Christmas. I really love how they package this. They made it to where you didn't have to use a knife to open it at all, which is super uh, convenient and thoughtful. And there she is. Now, is the paint perfect? Nah, no, not even close. For those of you wondering, no, this is this is a replica wing. Trying to buy a genuine wing when these reps are produced fairly nicely, um, it, it just at this point in my life, it's just not worth it to buy a genuine one. One day for sure, I will definitely be getting my hands on a genuine one. Uh, but for now, I can buy five of these for the price of a genuine one and that doesn't include shipping so probably more like six or seven of these for the price of a genuine one um, unless I can find one here in the states because le legit it's uh, it it's parts from Japan so um, but for now I'm totally okay with this um, first impressions uh, it's very lightweight it's extremely light uh, yeah Compared to a genuine one, uh, it's very lightweight. Now, this thing is going to need some work. Uh, I'm not just going to plop it onto the car. The paint that's on it will suffice. Um, if you just want to get it and throw it on the car, it will transform the look of the car immensely right out of the box. And this, but this, I mean, it came pre-painted and it's, like I said, it is okay, but uh, I'm actually going to uh, do some sanding to this and a little bit of body work to it myself and um, You know, I don't think it, I don't think it's gonna need Bondo or any kind of filler or anything like that It's 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 molded well enough to not have to deal with that But definitely some good old-fashioned hand sanding to, to make the fit perfect to make the finish perfect uh, And then I'm gonna have a, uh, a local body shop color match the paint for me, get the actual Nighthawk Black Pearl uh, paint code on this bad boy. But there's one issue with the RSX that we have to remedy first. That's right. You've heard it here first, folks. So let's go out in the garage and see what I'm talking about. So the big issue that I have with the Type R wing with my 05 Type S here is the factory duckbill, I mean, it is just right in the way. Uh, so I would like to get this thing installed before Import Alliance. Um, I'm actually gonna be sanding this thing, throwing a little bit of filler on it to make it perfectly smooth and make it, make it look like the best replica that you could possibly get your hands on. So 
that is going to be my goal. If I don't get it done, then that's okay. Because after Import Alliance is over, that's probably going to be the last show that I take this car to for a while. So if it doesn't get done by then, it's not really going to matter all that much. But that's kind of the reason why I want to get it done by then is because if it's going to be seen, I want it to be seen in its fullest glory that I can possibly present it in. But that being said, we're going to pop the hatch here and start pulling out the interior trim and see what we got to do to get to this wicker bill. Very cool, it looks like we're only missing one clip. I've got a few of those stashed away, so I'm gonna add that in. Now, with all this removed and the fact that we're gonna be removing the uh, wiper arm, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this, unplug it, and if for whatever reason I wanna put the wiper blade back on someday, I'll have the motor and I can just install it again. There's one more bolt holding the motor. Um, I'm gonna pull off the wiper arm itself first and then we'll pull out that last bolt. So as far as the wiper arm is concerned, I've just got my little plastic pry tool here and this should just be a little metal cover. It should pop off pretty easily, I, hope, I would hope. There we go, yep. Actually, this is plastic, believe it or not. I always thought that was metal. The only thing holding this on is a 12 millimeter nut. I'm gonna go ahead and wrench that off. Probably try to fight you a little bit. Oh, look at that. Came right off. <laughs> well, this is proven to be a lot easier than I remember. Then we got this big nut right here that actually holds the motor to the windshield itself. Not a 22. It is a very, very odd 23 millimeter. That does the trick. Then, there we go. Keep in mind, this stuff, this hardware has been on this car for, what is it, 16 years now? 16 whole years. The car is finally old enough to drive, ladies and gentlemen. So that should be everything holding uh, the threads to the motor up through the glass. Now we're gonna go back underneath the hatch and take out that last bolt. All right, now that all the bolts are out, we should just be able to wiggle this thing down through the rubber grommet. It's still pretty malleable up top. Ooh, I say that. It's kind of stuck on the bottom there. We have retrieved the grommet. I'm just going to reinstall everything onto the motor so that way I cannot lose it. That way, if anyone, if I ever need to give this to somebody or reinstall it myself, all the parts will be right where I left them. So there's our full assembly. So from here, what you get in the kit is you get two of these O-rings that get wedged between these two um, black pieces of aluminum here. So obviously this part right here goes on the top. This thicker part goes on the bottom, and the top portion here is threaded. So they give you this, uh, this nut along with this stud here. So you take your top piece here, and you take your stud, and you thread this in, get it about hand tight. Then we're going to go ahead and snug that up with an Allen head. You're going to need a number three Allen head to do that with. The installation is super simple. So you take one of your O-rings, they're both the same size, and this is to keep water out from getting inside your hatch. RSX has plenty of issues like that already. Then you take your second O-ring 
and put it on that so that way these two can sandwich together between the glass. Alright, once you've cleaned the surface really well with some alcohol, make sure you have the O-ring inside of the groove here. And then we're going to carefully lay that down on top. Okay, so quick little tip. If you're having some issues getting yours aligned as I am, uh, it's always helpful to have a friend for sure. But if you're alone, um, I just threw on some tape, went up here and I got it nice and centered. And so now, uh, now that I've got it marked off, I'm gonna go throw a piece of tape over the top of this. Okay, so I've got this thing as aligned as I can from, from the bottom. So we're gonna pop the hatch and check and see if it's centered from below. And just by eyeballing it, it's close. It seems like it can go a little bit more to my left. So I'm gonna make that adjustment real fast. So now, as you can hopefully see, I've got that thing about as aligned as I can. Uh, it's just got to be close. I just need the O-ring to be touching glass all the way around. It looks like I've accomplished that. So now we're going to go ahead and cinch the bottom down onto that part. The nut is a 10, by the way. All right, so now we got the bottom nice and torqued down. Obviously, you're torquing down on glass here, folks, so don't go too hard on it. But hopefully... The tape here has saved the day. I, I highly recommend that. If, if you don't have a second pair of hands helping you out, uh, tape, honestly, is probably better than even a human hand because so, it's going to stay steady. And here we have our final product, ladies and gentlemen. You can even see yourself in it. That is incredible. Look at that amazement. Look, you can even see me. Hello there. Bask in its glory that that looks good that looks really good let's change to a wide angle lens oh yes that right there this right here is amazing this is what a hatchback should look like am i right it's really nice that they uh threw in that creature comfort of a, a, a rear windshield wiper for you but i do believe with the power of rain -X, this right here will be fine um, most vehicles don't even have a rear windshield wiper uh, if it's a coupe car like this. I know this is technically a hatchback, but two-door car, you know what I mean. Uh, even on uh, my wife's old sedan that we used to have, the, the little Chevy Cruze that you guys would have seen uh, at some point or another, had a rear window, didn't have a, uh, a wiper. Now granted, this, this window is more like a, a windshield in size, so I, I definitely understand why they would put windshield wipers on these, but just for a sleek, and clean look that we're going for on this thing, I think this wraps it up really, really well. So now we're gonna move on to something a little bit different. Okay, you guys, so in an attempt to show you guys exactly what you need to do to remove the rear uh, factory duck bill here or wicker bill or spoiler, whatever you wanna call it, the deck lid, uh, there's, there's, uh, it's held on with mainly clips. There's clips all through here. There's about, I'm going to say about six to eight of them. I'm not entirely sure, but the one thing that you definitely need to be made aware of inside, uh, this hole up here that you guys can see on, on either side, uh, of the hatch. If you look up inside this hole here, you will be able to see that there is a, a stud coming through with a nut on it. I do believe from the factory that is what, if you look on the outside, there's the Acura symbol. That's what that little grommet right there is for. So we're gonna try and pop that thing out so we can get a better reach on that nut. Uh, I'm kind of terrified because if I lose that nut, it's going into the hatch and it will be a pain in the butt to find it. But we're going to do our very best. So let's pop that out with one of our little plastic pry tools. In an attempt to mitigate me losing that nut, I'm going to strategically place some of my long magnets here. So hopefully, uh, if it does come loose, we won't completely lose it. These little rubber grommets come out extremely easily. I just wanted to be careful in doing that. Um, also, you've got these guys right here. Probably wouldn't be a horrible idea to maybe remove those just for the time being. These are just the rubber stops. So I'm gonna 
Go ahead and remove all of these. Put them inside the hatch here. All right, let's see what size these are. They look like they're smaller than 10s. They are indeed smaller than 10s. My next guess is gonna be an eight. It is indeed an eight millimeter. The last person that touched this nut in this way, in this car, was the person that was finally assembling this thing in Japan. It's kind of a cool moment for me. There it is. I got it. Yeah, definitely, definitely go for the magnets on this one, guys. Two for two. Very nice. That definitely seemed to do the trick. So if you got some long needle nose, give them a try before you break anything. Yeah, that's definitely the way to go. Well, I broke two of them, but two out of two, four, six ain't bad. <laughs> so from here, um, I'm actually going to, uh, if I can, I'm going to pull out the clips. I'm gonna order some more because I'm planning on keeping the duckbill, obviously. Uh, I'm gonna have it repainted. I'm gonna sand it, have it repainted. Actually, see right here where, this one broke. Looks like some of these were, uh, had some silicone around them. Definitely makes sense. It says Honda on it, which is super cool. OEM part. Um, I'm a little hesitant uh, in cutting this and making it fit, but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? So if I, I've been looking for a mini deck lid for a while now, uh, and I just am not able to find one. replace that with some 3m tape or something probably uh, i'm gonna keep looking for a mini deck lid for sure because uh, if i can save this from getting chopped i'm going to but uh, also having a uh this is a genuine part it's going to fit better than anything else i'm going to be able to buy so i'm gonna i would like to actually keep it on the car even with the type r wing at some point so but we'll see but we have it off now so i'm going to clean up the trunk really really well and then we can maybe look and see what the wing will look like, maybe. All right, the hatch is clean. Well, it's almost clean. Okay, a little polishing later and uh, it looks really good. I brought the color back uh, from where it was uh, messed up. A few areas I couldn't fix. Uh, that right there, that's uh, that's gonna need paint to be totally fixed. Uh, there's a scratch right there, scratch right there. Paint missing from there, but there's already a hole there. Paint missing there and there. This side doesn't look too bad, just maybe a little bit more polishing, but overall, not bad and it's ob obviously i mean the whole car is in really good shape it just needs a bath honestly but as far as these holes are concerned if we get the mini deck lid fixed then we can cover these up which is the plan because welding these would be permanent and expensive but this scratch right here that's just uh that's pushing me over the edge that's that's kind of deep i'm not a fan of that but you know what'll cover up that scratch really, really well? Oh yeah, it's so slick it won't even stay up there now. One moment.
toot my own horn just yet, but I mean, you know, they're lining up. Just, you know, first try. A lot of times I joke about that, but legitimately, you guys, first try. <laughs> Trust me, I'm just as shocked as you are. I will put a link down in the description for this exact wing because, I mean, honestly, guys, I, I truly got to say, they uh, hit the nail on the head as far as the mounting points are concerned because legitimately, I'm, I'm telling you, I drilled once, measured once, drilled once. Uh, the punch was definitely a lifesaver. Um, used a used my Christmas tree bit or my step drill bit. Went down to a uh, quarter inch, nine thirty seconds, to where it's it's a hole large enough for the bolts to slide in and out just perfectly. Seriously, <laughs> factory holes. Like, unbelievable. I mean, it, it really is unbelievable. <laughs> That's so cool. I mean, seriously, it's perfect. I mean, it's it, it's as perfect as you can get for a hundred and thirty bucks painted. I mean. Like I said earlier in this video, if you absolutely just wanted to buy this and bolt it on, especially if you don't already have a, a, a deck lid spoiler like what comes on my car from the factory, this is one quick, easy way to really spruce up your car. Now, a couple things, obviously. This is not a final fitment. Um, I would definitely, what I'm gonna do is I'm, I've got some touch-up paint for this car. I'm going to uh, uh, retape everything and I'm gonna hit the bare metal with some touch-up paint Obviously, it's a really good idea to do that. And then put a little bit of Honda Bond or some black silicone or something like that on the threads uh, just to keep water from getting in. It's a really good idea, you guys. So definitely do that. But as far as just throwing the wing on the car just to see what it looks like, because uh, we've committed now. There's holes. There are new holes in the car. I drilled new holes in the car. It's a big thing for me. Don't like doing that. But uh, it's on. It's, let me take you guys off the tripod here. It's on. And it looks good. Let me see what it looks like in the rear view. I gotta see. Gotta see it. <laughs> I mean, the, the whole hatch is torn apart, but I mean, it really doesn't obstruct my view, like, at all. I mean, it's, I see it. It's there, but like, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Love it. Okay, let's move on to the next step of this process all right so this is something that i've been wanting for a long time but look pretty much at the same time same length of time as i have wanted a type or wing on the rsx and that is this this is a password jdm uh integra type r honda integra type r or acura rsx gurney flap or you know, let's just say DC5 chassis. Um, this is made to go on the very top of a Type R wing, an OEM Type R wing. So as far as I can tell, this is a 100% legit Password JDM gurney flap. So we're gonna break the seal on this bad boy and uh, we're gonna see, we're gonna answer one of the biggest questions that I've that I've seen scrolling through through years and years, decades ago now, uh, through the forums. Will a legit password JDM gurney flap fit on a replica wing? We're gonna find out right now. You can tell that this thing's legit just by holding it. Like it looks so dead gum good. I love it so much. All right, moment of truth here. Will it fit? And unsurprisingly, not quite. It is very, very close. If I can actually get it to sit up here and not fall off and make me cry, um, I will show you guys the differences and what needs to be fixed or improved on it. Mm -hmm. 
that's uh, that's kind of the the gap that we're dealing with. Um, it's really it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Honestly, obviously the center here it can be pressed down. Um, might take a little bit of like heat with a heat gun to kind of get this thing to lay down perfectly. Um, now, as far as like how this thing will fit with an OEM uh, Type R wing, I think it would fit fine. Um, so the plan is that we all know that the replica wing is definitely, you know, it's not perfect. It, it can't be. Uh, nothing's going to fit as good as a genuine OEM wing. Definitely something I want to get in the future. Uh, I really do want to get a genuine wing. It's just not in the cards right now. I'd rather finish the, the K24, obviously, as I've been saying for years now. But uh, I do, I do, uh, it's getting close to, to uh, my birthday. So you, usually around my birthday, I usually try and do something that I would consider fun and enjoyable. So as far as how this thing fits, like I said, it's going to need some work. The spoiler itself is going to need some work. I'm not going to do anything, uh, you know, drastic to the gurney flap itself. Um, I think it's, I think the gurney flap is fine. And like I said, I believe on a legit Type R wing, it would probably just fit with no issues whatsoever. Now, I don't know if I've ever showed you guys how to put on hub centering rings before. Honestly, I don't think it's something that I have to show you guys how to put on. Uh, it's, it's, it literally could not be simpler. It's one of the easiest things to do. You just simply make sure that your bore inside your wheel is clean. It doesn't have any nicks or debris or anything in there. And then you just simply slide the ring in there. So one thing, I mean, obviously you want to check and make sure that it fits inside the, the wheel perfectly. You don't want it to be sticking out too far or anything. These are perfectly fitted for the RPF ones, but you also want to make sure that it's going to go onto your hub completely flush as well. And they do. So, uh, yeah, it definitely took me a little bit of research to get the right ones. This was not a fluke. I didn't just go and randomly guess <laughs> which ones I need to buy. Uh, some people put a little bit of Loctite on them just to uh, keep them in there. But, you know, with my experience, I find that once you get it in there and you bolt this bad boy up to the, the car, uh, you really don't have to worry about it. Well, that was well-timed. <laughs> well, but... You know, once it's bolted up, you really don't have to worry about it after that. So, let's get this thing back up on here. Actually, I'm just going to stick it on here. So that way maybe it won't fall off. Perfect. I'm just going to snug this thing up real quick. Perfect. And with that being said... It's in there, it's lined up really, really nicely. So we're just gonna get the rest of these back on there. Me and uh, a friend of mine were actually debating this. I thought that hub sitting rings were more of like a suspension type of uh, aftermarket modification, like, you know, or maybe more towards like an alignment type of modification, because without this in there, you know, you, you may bolt your wheel, all the, you know, gravity's working against you. If you don't have this on there, then the wheel's gonna be, you know, bolted down at its lowest position, and this just helps keep it straight. Well, turns out that this modification is more of a drivetrain modification, which makes total sense. I can't exactly remember how the conversation went, or else this, you know, I'd be able to explain it so much better to you guys. But uh, it, it just got me thinking, like, what, what, does this do or not do but what does it what does it affect and it's a drivetrain obviously makes total sense also with my research i found out that your tire is actually part of your suspension your wheel is part of your drivetrain um your axle is part of your drivetrain your hub is part of your drivetrain but your tire is part of your suspension who would have thought And now to add some clarity to the video, it has been some time since most of that was filmed. And I am happy to say that as far as my factory duck bill is concerned, this is not it. <laughs> it did not get chopped. This is an OEM Honda A-Spec style 
that is meant to go underneath the Type R wing. And you may say that the Type R wing may, might look a little bit different. That's because it has been properly color matched. Unfortunately, since the filming of the majority of those videos, I have lost a lot of footage for some reason. And I'm not exactly sure why. Technical gremlins, it happens. But I want to say a big thanks. I didn't want to leave this out. I want to have just a huge thanks to my friend Chris. Chris, you know who you are. I'm not going to say your last name for privacy reasons. But uh, one of my DC5 buddies way out in the state of California sent me this A-spec lip to cover up all those holes that was on the deck lid of the RSX. So that way I could fit the Type R wing over it and not have to cover up those holes by welding or by cutting my factory uh, spoiler. And so I still have the factory spoiler. It's mine. No, I'm not getting rid of it because it came on the car and it's my car. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to bring some clarity to the video before we wrap it up. Um, it's going to be wrapped up pretty quickly now considering all the footage that I had that I was going to show you guys is now gone. But regardless, the RSX is ready for import alliance. So let's go. If I were to the sea, baby, I never see. For I would fall to the light. Every time I try to breathe. 